It covered the widest area of any aircraft accident ever. Hundreds and hundreds of miles, obviously, because the shuttle broke up at 200,000 feet, going many, many thousands of miles an hour. We walked around the fields and we drove through East Texas and, and saw some of the debris as it laid in the field, untouched by human hands, uh, and got a feel for how difficult this was. The wreckage turned out to be spread over three separate states. And to date, almost two-thirds of it is still missing. So early on, the investigators realized that the standard approach wouldn't work. But they did have another crucial piece of evidence. It was all to do with when the shuttle had broken up. The disaster had occurred at a very specific point in its journey back to Earth. A key element in this particular incident was where in the flight profile the event occurred, just at the, shortly after the beginning of the re-entry. The shuttle hits the Earth's atmosphere at tremendous speed. This creates temperatures of almost 3,000 degrees. You have all of this energy at uh, Mach 25, 17,500 miles an hour. The friction of the air passing over the vehicle and the shock waves creates these tremendously high temperatures. It was at this point, when temperatures were at their highest, that disaster had struck. For the investigators, this was a huge clue. 